What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny Saw in Review. That's right. We are ranking, recapping, and reviewing. Yep. <laughs> I said it out of order and I got real lost. The yeah. Saw franchise, the Saw cinematic universe, if you will. Uh, of course, I am Tim Geddes. I am joined by, it is Christmas in September, Joey Noel. Hello. The producer slash seducer Nick Scarpino. Hello. The Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. There's, uh, there's, pe there's people sawing stuff right outside the window right now. <laughs> <laughs> on theme. It's Ooh. immersion, everybody. <laughs> uh, we're not even at Saw 3D. We're already jumping to Saw 40. You'll love to see it. And rounding out the group today, of course, it's Dog Bark's own Alfredo Diaz. That's really cool to hear. <laughs> <laughs> really cool to hear. How you doing, Fredo? Good. Um, just, you know, we're close to launch. Um as of recording, we this is what Thursday we're, and uh, Mondays are launch, so just getting stuff together. Get hyped, everybody! Yeah. Go show up for Dog Bark on Monday when they start launching stuff. Uh, but enough about promoting that. We need to promote this show because not enough people watch <laughs> this show, Joey. It's true. Of course, we do this show each and every week on YouTube.com slash kind of funny or roosterteeth.com. You could also get it as a podcast by searching your favorite podcast service for kind of funny in review, and we'll be right there for you. Uh, if you want even more content out there in the movie and TV space, well, guess what? We got a lot of that on the kind of funny screencast. Uh, we're about to close out our weekly uh, discussions of Ahsoka because the finale is next week. But also next week is the premiere of Loki season. Two. Oh, so we're going to be doing that as well, which is extremely exciting. It's a good time to be alive. Gen V, the boys spinoff, actually starts this week with three episodes. I don't think we have time to actually give our thoughts next week, but we might be able to slip it in. But just letting everyone know that, that it's probably going to be asking, are y'all planning on doing it? The plan right now is to not do that. Yeah. Uh, but we will be doing Ahsoka and Loki next week. So stay tuned for all of that. And um, the first Marvel show that we don't have to stay up till midnight to exactly. watch. Exactly. It's coming out at yeah. 6 p.m. on Thursdays now. So that's extremely exciting. Uh, we'll be recording our reviews I'll on Thursdays. I'll watch it at midnight, though. Uh, yeah, just for <laughs> tradition's sake. Uh, of course, you can go above and beyond though by going to patreon.com slash kind of funny just like our patreon producers jedi master deadpool james hastings casey andrew logan delaney nathan lamoth and patrick delgado have done uh we appreciate you all so very much because of their support they get the show ad free they get to watch live as we record it they get a whole bunch of bonus content it's a fantastic offer today we're brought to you by shady rays rocket money and doordash but we'll tell you all about that later because we got to talk about saw five the fifth iteration in the Saw franchise, uh, with the runtime of one hour and 32 minutes. Exactly the same runtime as Saw 4. Oh. Yeah. Released on October 24th, 2008. Uh, directed by David Hackle. This is uh, his first time doing this. Mm. The last couple movies have all been directed by the same person, with the exception of Saw 1, uh, which, of course, was James Wan. So this uh, David Hackle fellow was the produ production designer and second unit director for Saw 2, 3, and 4. And it was just like, you know what? These annual things starting to get real hard. So the main guy was like, I'm going to back off for a bit. And then he, he, this guy came in to do this one, which is why it has a very different vibe than the other ones. Uh, this one, once again, music done by Charlie Clauser, a budget of 10.8 million, which is right there in line with the last couple uh, iterations. And the box office was 118.2 million. So starting to dip a little bit compared to the last, but still a major success for Lionsgate out there. Nick Scarpino. Yes. I want to start with you as uh, you and Joey, the two people that have not seen the Saw franchise before. Wait, real quick. I know, Alfredo, you've seen them all. Andy, have you seen this one before? This was confirmed to be the first one I have not seen. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. So, Nick, let's start with you. What did you think of Saw 5? Uh, I I liked this movie. I, I, I enjoyed it. It was simpler than the one that came prior, which I think is why. I think we, if I hadn't watched them week to week, this one might have been a little bit lower for me. But coming off of all the convolution of last week and all the craziness and all the all the twists and turns and all that stuff, I found the simplicity of this story, the kind of cat and mouse game and the fun twist at the end, to be a welcome relief. I enjoyed it. Very, very exciting. Joey, what about you? I did not. Counterpoint. <laughs> Counterpoint. I, I mean, here's the thing. It's still, I'm still fun. I, it's still fun. I'm still invested in the series. Um, but this one to me is like really forgettable. Um, I don't think any of the traps in this are like particularly good. I think that the like gore of this one looks really bad. Um, like even the like the swinging uh, pendulum pendulum thing. Like I think that looks like a bad like uh, haunted house kind of a thing. Um, I don't think that the the like actual trap characters are like 
memorable or anything. I think it's just like a very like whatever movie. Um, and that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, it being your first time with this one, what'd you think? Uh, I'm kind of with Nick on this one. Whoa! I, I'm, I'm, I'm a, surprised go, that I found as much joy as I did with it. Um, <laughs> oh. All things considered. No. <laughs> I know he's only oh, missed each other. Okay. Sorry. Here we go. We're high fiving each other, audio, uh, audio listeners, because I'm I'm working from home right now. Um, yeah, I was I, I found myself enjoying it. It is a you know, I don't enjoy it as much as the other ones, but I kind of came into this one knowing that the bottom was about to fall out really aggressively for me, and I still haven't quite gotten there yet. Like I'm still kind of enjoying the universe being built. I'm enjoying these characters. Um. I I do agree with Joey though that, that a lot of these traps weren't super well thought out or creative and you know you can kind of say well yeah Jigsaw isn't a part of these or whatever but I uh, I did enjoy the of course at the end of the movie when you get the dual even triple planes of action at the same time going on I love when movies do that I love feeling the intensity there and I was a big fan of all of these characters kind of being tied together in a way that they slowly figured out. And by the end of it, we're like, we just needed to work together and that's all it took. And we would have been a lot better off. Um, I was a fan of that. And by the end of it, man, once, you know, once a saw thing kicks in, it's like, Oh man, I, I like this movie. Like, I don't <laughs> think it's particularly awesome by any means, but I still am having a decent time with this whole franchise. Shockingly. I love to hear that. Alfredo, what do you think of this one? This is where I'm torn. Like, <laughs> I think there was a lot of things that I really enjoyed. I enjoyed the kind of like the layout of the traps where you went from room to room. I thought that was really cool. I enjoy the fact that it was something where um, as a collective, they could have accomplished things. Um, and then I also liked that it made me care about Hoffman because I always, every time I watch four, I'm like, or, or just three, I'm like, I don't like this guy. I don't like Hoffman. And then, and then you, you get to four and you're like, oh God, he's an apprentice. And then I get to five and I'm like, all right, I care a little bit more. It gives me reason to care about him, et cetera. I don't think the big twist pays off because of, um, uh, just like a couple technical diff like details for me and then on top of that just kind of like the traps overall were really lackluster i thought that it would have paid off if like it felt like it was smartly done as like a group thing but like right off the bat i'm just like well i mean you know that room's gonna blow up but then you could like, fit like three people into that hole i don't understand how does no one think about that like it just it did det it detached me so hard so i'm like really torn but i think i'm more so on like and eh, it's not that great yeah i think i think i'm with you fredo where it's like this to me is definitively the first one that i'm like i would say it's not good and whereas the other ones I'd kind of fight for is being like, no, 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 it's good. Despite this or whatever, like this one, I'm kind of like, Hey, I get it. I get it. I still really love it though. And I enjoy it. The cat and mouse kind of game that we have going on with Strom and Hoffman, like that stuff was engaging. It's not necessarily what I want to see from a saw movie and the things I want to see, they delivered, but then just not quite re reaching the heights that I feel like the potential could have like having the, the group of five, the, the multi puzzles, multi room, they could have worked together. They all knew each other somehow or all connected. That's, stuff's great i love when the saw movies kind of really lean into that i just feel like yeah there was a little bit too many like logic fallacies in in how they went about it um but those logic fallacies also then allowed for like really funny moments like megan good getting electrocuted in the bathtub Hilarious. Um, it was just good god, god bless <laughs> god damn. but uh i just i love always I, and forever fredo <laughs> ever <laughs> since cousin skeeter uh but <laughs> I, uh, I I did enjoy the the, the soap opera ness of this, how it continues to just be like really ridiculously convoluted. I love that Strom goes back to the razor trap from the first movie. Like those things are always really cool, and uh, I feel like the twist in this is like 
extremely lame and not good, but it's so lame that it's, it makes me like it. <laughs> like, it's just so like, wait, that's what you guys are going with for a twist? And it was something I could have never predicted. And I'm like, you know what? Five movies into this franchise and the twist still surprises me. I got to give him some credit for that, even though it's goofy as hell. Him in his little glass cage getting lowered as the other guy gets crushed and his arm busted. I was like, what oh. the fuck? This is absolutely That's the thing wild. that gets me about the end where it's like, so the walls are caving in and you decide that your move is to try and push them. like that just makes no sense to me but well, you got to do something do? i yeah. know right and the, the so last point i'll say here is i think this is really the turning point where the movie and kind of the genre of it all starts to feel dated in its presentation where you see the other ones and the fast cuts and the shaking and all of it. And this doesn't have any of It's that. always weird. Like it's always like very specifically saw and like, you know, disconcerting for sure. But there, from the title treatment of this one, you're like, oof, and the, the look of the gore and like just something about the production design on this. It's not that it feels cheap. It just feels like very dated design that is so clearly 2008 in a way that the other ones felt like just old movies this one yeah. feels like it's trying to be modern and failing <laughs> like pretty categorically i i think a lot of it tim is maybe better technology used with the cameras so seeing like an overall better image still using these old kind of erratic editing techniques and cutting around like there was still like a, a decent amount of moments of that in this movie that starts to definitely show its age like if you start if i see these editing techniques in 4k filmed with red cameras it's gonna feel like what the hell is going on right now but yeah, yeah i guess like by this point I, i've heard by from a couple people that saw six is not terrible so i was expecting Honestly, I was expecting by part four and part five for me to just kind of hate my existence with this in review. <laughs> I mean, without future, without future spoilers, this this one is the one that what like really people are like, eh, it's not good. Like this is always that, ranked lower, not lowest, but lower. Yeah, and that's what's kind of very encouraging for me because I, I I expected myself to feel the way I feel in uh, other in reviews we've done where I'm like, Oh, this is so hard to watch. And like, I don't want to be doing this right now. Or you get that feeling where like, yeah, it always happens to me and Nick, uh, Fredo, where we just like at the end of the night, we're like, all right, time. Like, let me go let's hop in the shower, go to bed. And it's 1130. I'm like, Oh fuck. I have to watch goddamn transformers seven right now. <laughs> <laughs> fuck, I was and out like, with Nick last night at 11 PM. And he looked at me and goes, I still need to watch Saw 5. Oh, and damn. I was like, oh, so that's, oh that, no. That is, huh. So that's a good testament right there, yeah. Nick, that like oh. this well, is one of those you're having to watch late at night and you're hating yourself and your existence and you're like, you know what? This movie could be a lot could be worse. worse. <laughs> it, it's got a couple things going for it. Um, one, maybe I had a bourbon. I was going to say, what's the margarita <laughs> factor? Maybe there was a bourbon or two yeah. in me when I went Give home. Me and one two, margarita. It's yeah. just got the, the, here's the problem. Here's the pro and con, right? Mm -hmm. The 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 right and the wrong of the series, it's an hour thirty. I know. So you start thinking to yourself, I'll watch it a little bit later. It's like an hour thirty. I can do an hour thirty in my sleep, right? Eleven o'clock. Ooh, it was tough. Oh. <laughs> twelve thirty yeah. roll. Twelve fifteen rolled around, and that dude held his hand up that had a split down the middle. Oh, I was like, was Am I hallucinating tough. right now? Woo! Yeah, that was a lot. That was a lot. Fun. All right, we're gonna get into our thoughts and the plot and everything. But before we do that, here's a word from our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by DoorDash. Did you burn your last piece of toast? Have the avocados gone bad? Is the hot sauce bottle empty? You can try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it right to your door. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. You already know how much all of us here at Kinda Funny love DoorDash, but with thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy with each and every order. You'll get exactly what you ordered or they'll make it right. If you want even more value, you can save on all of your grocery and restaurant favorites with a $0 delivery fee on all eligible orders with a Dash Pash membership with easy substitutes right in the app and best in class customer support. You can get 50% off your first DoorDash order up to a $20 value when you use code KINDA at checkout. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subtotal and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter code KINDA. Don't forget, that's code KINDA 
for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. This episode is brought to you by Shady Rays. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. You can go to ShadyRays.com and use code KINDAFUNNY for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. You can try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Again, that's shadyrays.com. Use the code kinda funny. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps you lower your bills all in one place. And it has surprised multiple of my friends and people at Kind of Funny how many subscriptions they have that they forgot they are still paying for. That's why I'm such a big fan of Rocket Money. It's so easy to cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. No more long hold times or annoying emails with customer service. Rocket Money does all the work for you. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bills and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. That's rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. One more time, rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. Andy? Fuck. Hold on. One second. I want to hear a plot. Ladies Very and hard gentlemen. to do remotely. Sorry. <laughs> No, I mean, it's kind of, it gave me, like, Saw slash, like, Coheed Cambria. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I love you just kind of, like, sneak it over the guitar. I, yeah, I gotta, like, get it up near the mic. Ooh, that, sounds cool. that was tight. That was beautiful. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the plot for Saw 5. Tim, mm -hmm. quit playing games with, with my, my heart. heart. <laughs> a man is tied down to a bed. His name is Seth. Yeah, we're going to meet him a lot in this movie. We're going to see a lot of Seth. Uh, he wakes up with a collar on his neck and he's tied. And man, getting jiggy with it comes on the TV and tells Seth he wants to play a game. Getting jiggy with it. That's what we're calling Jigsaw We're now. just here, man. Jiggy and I are friends. <laughs> I hate the Jigginator. <laughs> it's to the point where I just, I, la I, I laugh and smile every time that TV cuts to static and you just see like it, like because I just imagine how many takes he took to make this and like him fucking up lines. Be like, no, oh, wait, hold on, I fucked. Uh, is that a three? <laughs> like, I, just, like, I just love the idea of like him recording these. It's so funny to just see that. It reminds me of when Greg does unboxings and does like the. All right, I'm gonna start with a camera up here, then I'm gonna go. Hey, what's up, everybody? And like, that's what Jigsaw does. He just kind of lowers the camera. <laughs> and, he just, and he just stay there. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so a content good. creator in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Out of his time. Uh, we see our first crazy game here, which, of course, is a pendulum swing. It's going to cut this guy in half if he wants to uh, get out of it. Of course, he has to use, he has to destroy the implements that he used to hurt people, which are his hands. He's going to put his hands through his little devices and push a button, and then they're going to come crush his hands. So he does it at the last minute. And, of course, it doesn't work. Uh, the pendulum cuts him in half, man. We see every single slice of this thing. Oh, my God. And as he's dying, he's like, I did what you said. What was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to do? And he looks at the man and little people. And little people, I look back peeping. at him. I'm Hoffman. I'm a little peeper. I'm Hoffman. I will say it is way more brutal that it just, like, cuts him every time instead of just one initial yeah. swing that gets everything. And it's... It Shooting Death the blood. by a thousand cuts. Ooh. Like it was like oh, this is a lot. Yeah, but it didn't look good. No, so it was, did not. It did not. It's no. so, for me, it was so weird to go from Saw Three, where I felt like I had to fast forward through a lot of the traps, to this one, which felt like we saw way more gore, but I was like largely unaffected by it. Yeah, the um, th 
This one kind of let me down from the jump of like it being the first intro trap, like introduction to this movie. The whole line of like, put your hands there, they'll, they'll be crushed into dust. And they're kind of just crushed. You know yeah. what I mean? I kind of wanted yeah. to, like, they set it up that it was going to be like, Oh, you again, wanted going to, like, back not to have hands. the reverse bear trap, right? Yeah. You're just mm-hmm. like, it's kind of yeah. like a reverse bear trap. You're like, <laughs> I know exactly what that means. And he fucking shows it what it means on the melon. Here it's like, it's going to fucking crush you into goddamn dust. And it just kind of like squeezes him a little bit. It's like, <laughs> like ew, ew. Little hand user. But also, <laughs> like, if it had to be crushed to dust, how, it, they also had to push the button. So it's like at some yeah. point, you're just kind of hoping that your finger stays in place. Yeah. Right? With enough pressure. Yeah. Otherwise, you can get stuck halfway through I'm the track. I'm surprised that the buttons weren't like hand down buttons so yeah. that the yeah. crushing thing like also held them. Yeah, but then you could put like one little finger in there. You know, a little pinky true. finger. You don't really need this finger, Joe. But maybe, like, you need a certain amount of pressure to get the button Yeah, but done. You know what I mean? Like, I'm so good at this. <laughs> He's got strong pinkies. This is why Jigsaw's not, not kidnapping you, you know? <laughs> so Honestly, this is, one of the, this is one of the reasons why I kind of like this movie is because at this point, we'll get to the scene in a little bit, but um, well, we'll get to the scene in a little bit. I'll, I'll tell you when we get there. We're not quite there yet, of course. <laughs> um, well, I just like that Jigsaw, everyone knows him at this point. Yeah. And so when they wake up, they go, oh, shit, we're in a Jigsaw, it's a jigsaw puzzle. thing. Let's stop and talk about this for a second. I was like, oh, that's actually, that's pretty smart. And it brings a new dimension to uh, to the series. Uh, of course, we're not there yet. So we catch back up with Stram, man. Stram and Jeff and Lynn and Lynn's head. Mm. Oh, we, how many times do we see this head? <laughs> Who wants bolognese sauce? God, uh, every time. Andy, want a little every ragu, time. a little ragu. Goo. <laughs> so this this moment here makes me laugh every time because it is the true brilliance and insanity of the Saw movies of what they expect us to believe and how they just keep having to add layers and then retconning and adding more layers to the layers. So it's just like cool. Last uh, movie, we last episode, we learned that uh, Saw 3 and 4 were happening at the same time. Because of that, there had to be a lot of like, and then this, and then this, and then this. So we have this room that everything had to work perfectly to get all these people killed in the right way. And then the moment he leaves this room, like there's a trap door <laughs> that they show that's been there the whole time. And then they walk through, and then there's another tape recorder on a string with the next part of the game. It is just so fucking hilariously com- complex. Like, yeah. There is no way that a tenth of this would go off no. in any way that yeah. worked at all. No. But here it is. It's I, just imagine, I imagine the alternate reality where Strom just like, I don't want I, I don't want to be a part of this. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm not doing this. <laughs> the I'm movie's out. end. Because <laughs> um, you're talking about like the, the string with the tape and it's mm-hmm. like, hello, Detective Strom. I just imagine that like the alternate reality where Strom got shot in the face with the shards of the doll and not his partner and then his partner's on this path and yeah. he's like or the crossbow i'm not, str- I'm not strong oh, yeah, or, you, yeah or the you guys boats. are you guys are missing the point of this right <laughs> jigsaw is a, is a quick study of the human condition mm-hmm. he True. knows people he's a people person he does he knows exactly what you're gonna do tim mm-hmm. i'm gonna jigsaw you right now yeah oh, yeah you're gonna go home tonight and play with your dogs it's true. I knew it. Wow. I fucking knew it. Whoa. Wow. Whoa. There it is. What is this? Andy, give me the music. Wee-wee-wee. I don't no. know. Why are you singing? I can't remember the song. What? I just remember it kind of sounds like. <laughs> it kind of sounds like Live and Let Die. Are you singing Wings? Yeah. Whatever. Paul McCartney. Awesome song. Close enough. Fredo, the um, I, I think the perfect like moment that could have happened um is that instead Strom's squad mate was not the one that got the shards hit to the face, and you hear the tape record. He's like, "Hello, Strom." And if you're not strong, fast forward to the two minute mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. So what I love here too is that we we get the set at the end of three. One of the parts of the twist was Jeff, your game's not over. Your fucking daughter's trapped, and it's like, oh shit, they're definitely gonna deal with that in the fourth movie. And then they just don't, and then they just kill Jeff, and they're like, what are we gonna do? And then this movie's just like Hoff is like, ah, I saved the girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, okay. no other information. That's it. Nothing, uh, no idea of what that game was going to be, which would have been cool because it would have been an actual jigsaw game. No, none of that. Yeah. Uh, but I do love 
that he comes out of the warehouse and he's like, there's no one. He's like, Hoffman, are you okay? He's like, yeah. You saved the girl, you're here. Yeah. Is there anyone left? He's like, no, there's no one left. And then he looks over and fucking Stram comes out. We've and, got and a live one, got a live is what one they say. Because he and gave I himself popped. a fucking tracheotomy. Oh, fuck that, dude. I hate it. No. Now, yeah. It's one of those things, though, that I got to give this movie credit. I don't know that it's a good thing, but I got to give it credit that when I think back on Saw as a franchise, and like now that we're doing this interview, it's a little bit obviously way more fresh in my mind, but like having watched these movies when I did back in the day, there are a couple scenes that will just stick with you forever. Saw one, pretty much the entirety of that movie. Saw two, the needle pit. Saw three, the rack. This bit I think about so often, and I yeah. think about... Hoffman's dumbass being <laughs> lowered down in his stupid glass coffin. <laughs> I wish that I could recreate the sound I made when he shoved that pen in his throat. Like, it, I, it feels like this is a brand new sound that's never been made before in human history. <laughs> I was just not <laughs> expecting that at all. You, you don't expect it. And it, it is kind of like, uh, oh shit, like you outsawed the saw game you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's like you came up with your own fucked up thing to do like it's not like jigsaw came on the thing was just like you've been the throat goat your entire life yeah well you do this room was for nancy reagan <laughs> i i will say like i i'm on the same page with tim where i will constantly keep thinking about that you know uh that scene but for some reason this time around i just kept thinking like whoa scott patterson like really like submerged his head in a box. <laughs> like, yeah, damn, a box that's got people are okay with that. I'm just throwing this out there, a little rubber thing that, and that you and your hands are free, but, the, but just maybe peel it away and let the water out. I don't know, just throwing that out there. I mean, you what know? I would have done is just you just start drinking the water. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like fucking Barva in beer fest. <laughs> Genius. Uh, we move right along. Jill heads over to her lawyer's house uh, or her lawyer's office. And for a second, I thought this guy was Will Ferrell. I was like, wow, he's everywhere. He was everywhere at this time. Uh, the lawyer goes, hey, I got a package for you from from your former husband. And it's, a, it's about the size of a, 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 a head. And so I'm thinking, oh, it's going to be, you know, a head in a box for sure. And then it's VHS Jill tape. <laughs> Was it a VHS tape? Well, there was the box, but it also came with a VHS tape, which I just, I, there's something about that that is perfect. Do you think that he had like a tape to tape editing system? Or do you think he had to do what I had to do in high school, which was like record himself and like shit, and then rewind it right to the part where he wanted to pick it up again. And then, and then it's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. go, is he taping a tape or does he have some sort of better system for this? You're asking great questions. I mean, like the the static that always starts off of these things. Yeah. Like, is that like a filter? You know and what like, I mean? Yeah. Like, is he added that Maybe. in? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, I just picture him. In, I picture him at Best Buy. Like, and so this does component video. Or, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, sir, I can't hear you through the mask. Does it come with an S video plugin? <laughs> yeah. sure. I, I really want that higher fidelity. Uh, <laughs> Jill takes a key from around her necklace. I have to imagine. This didn't pay off in the movie, right? I have to imagine this is coming later. Jill again like, continues to just be the absolute worst question mark in these movies. It's weird. Where they just every movie she's been in so far, she's just there for a second, does some weird shit. You're like, what? That must pay off eventually. eventually. And it's like, it just feels dumb. And this actress, like I know this she's franchise is has oh. is full of just talent. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> There's something about Jill. That is, Ugh. am I wrong? Like, is this like no. the deep? She's not a very good actor. Like, I, it's rough. I, I want to see eyes. her throw things in the bathroom. You know what I mean? I feel like she'd fit in perfectly. <laughs> fair, fair. Uh, she takes out her key, unlocks the thing, and reacts in a very weird way. And half of me expected Pigman to come out and just stab her. <laughs> from the from box, the box. <laughs> just bam, ah, you know what I mean? Because he's coming out everywhere. No, you're a we bad don't actor. Ever, Stop. <laughs> we don't ever see what's in the box at all during this movie. No, do we? no, okay. no. This is a um. This, I had to imagine, is a glass coffin moment, which is what we'll call these from now on. And what that is, Joey, is a poorly set up, ham-fisted element that you shoved into this movie that's confusing, befuddling, and terrible writing, just so you can be clever at the next movie, which is exactly what happened in this movie. Because remember, we saw the glass coffin in four? Yeah, and then we saw the, the and, tape in the wax in three. Like, all that stuff. They keep doing it. It's, it's like horrible setup because you, it's just it's confusing into an audience member. You're like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And it, and it leaves you wondering for about five minutes what's going on, and then you just never get back to it. Yeah, I don't think those are as fun as when we, I guess, 
the things I like are when we like fuck around with the timeline. We're like, that's, oh, it's the girl from two in this movie, but this movie happens before it and stuff. But that doesn't make sense. Well, that's more clever, right? That's what you want to see from a series like this. You want the the reveal of, oh, this was you know above the bathroom the entire time, stuff like that. And you want those little. It's clever when they when they kind of put those Easter eggs in there. These aren't Easter eggs. These are full blown just ham fisted like. We're giving ourselves an yeah. out for a future movie. At we're we're just point. throwing yeah. these things in here for absolutely no reason other than, yeah, it's going to be in the next movie, which is kind of, it's, it's kind of cheap, but whatever. We get the shot here, though, of all the, the cops, the fallen cops of the last mm. couple yeah. movies. And all I, the Wahlbergs. It, it's a, so many Wahlbergs. <laughs> so many Wahlbergs. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it was a great moment, though, because I really feel like this, like, five movies in, like, that's a lot of films, right? And I feel like this one kind of really took the moment to be like, look how far we've come, like. All these characters have appeared in multiple movies for the most part. And like, we're going all the way back to the OG boys, you know, like mm -hmm. I, I thought it was cool. And it kind of like, I feel like saw one can often feel very disconnected, uh, despite how much they go back to the bathroom and stuff. Just the vibe and characters of that movie feel like they're from a different universe almost. And I feel like this is the first time that they've tried to make them match with Donnie Wahlberg on, which did feel a bit more like, okay, we know what we're building here. And, and if you notice in the credits, as the credits were scrolling up, their signatures were there too, just like in Avengers Endgame. <laughs> 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 it was just a whole tribute to the whole cast. <laughs> yeah, Donnie said, eat it, Wahlbergs. Uh, Hoffman, I guess, gets a note or finds a note or is an old note, I think, uh, that says, I, I know what you did last summer, uh, and heads to the evidence room to steal some cell phones, namely Stram's cell phone. Uh, why that's in the evidence room is beyond me. Why he wasn't just allowed to keep his cell phone is weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> God is strange. Anyway, I guess it was found in the scene, so yeah, sure. But anyway, it's a, that is a good <laughs> good point. He, he gets a note that he's wanted in the hospital. Something about Agent Perez's face. Uh, the last thing uh, she said was Detective Hoffman, and the stream's like that makes me suspicious of you. And I'd be like, hmm, you know, is. You're not suspicious of him that he's the only person to ever get out of one of these traps completely and totally unscathed? The man doesn't have a fucking scratch on him. Homie at the end of this movie looks like an alien. She's got four arms. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. She's dead. Lawrence Gordon, no foot. Donnie Wahlberg, no no problems. Head. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of things going on, right? Uh, also, if you're a detective and you have this hunch, why would you tell them if they're also a cop? Dude. This, yeah, okay. help them. We're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna, so we're gonna, gonna this movie. That seems like you're showing all of your cards, which why seems bad. <laughs> I'm gonna we're gonna do a test right now for everyone. You wanna oh. play a game? Do you guys wanna <laughs> play a game? Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Joey, this is a multiple choice question. Oh. You suspect Andy Cortez uh -huh. of aiding and abetting, potentially committing multiple, multiple gruesome serial murders. Do you A tell your boss about it? Mm -hmm. B, tell everyone at the FBI about it. Mm -hmm. Or C, go at it alone, and then when you find the guy, don't tell a single soul what's going on, period. Mm. I feel like maybe not the last one. Yeah, probably not the last <laughs> one, right? It's totally unbelievable that this guy's like, and the, the whole reason behind it is like his, this new boss, Erickson's like, you're a loose cannon, man. You're going through too many doors or whatever the fuck. Body dreading <laughs> <with> the last <laughs> one. Yeah. You're you busted through them. doors and your body can't cash, man. <laughs> and... And so he's like, I need you to take Ego, a break. You're off this case. I think all I would say is this. Cool. But before I go, we should look into Hoffman, right? And then the boss would be like, why? And I'm like, I don't know, man. This guy, something wrong with him. I don't trust him. Someone said it was inside man, whatever. And then it takes him all of one second to go through Hoffman's files and find a lot. one of the fucking guys yeah. that got killed murdered Hoffman's sister. And mm -hmm. Hoffman was the lead detective on the case. Conflict of interest. Notwithstanding. Also, when like, he motive. finds out this information, he just whispers, sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> it was like, your sister. It was, it was the best moment ever. And I'm like, at that point, you've got the smoking gun. You go, you call your boss. Yo, we got to pick this guy up and question him. We got to figure out where he yep. was. This is Surprise the guy. Him. But instead, by the end of this movie, Erickson's like, it was Stram the whole time. A man that just, if you remember correctly, just got put on this case last movie 
Hoffman been there since day one. Yeah. Hoffman's at 15 mm -hmm. murders every... Hoffman's like fucking on the grassy knoll with a fucking sniper rifle, right? He may have killed Kennedy for all we know. We don't by know. Point, this guy's this everywhere. Point, Hoffman, you get laid off by the fourth failed... Uh, yeah, <laughs> like, you're done. Like, man, you're clearly not doing any of this well. You haven't stopped the killer yet. You're not cut out for this, Hoffman. Maybe just go get a desk job. This is your fifth time attempting to, like, catch the dude. You're not successful. We're a bad police department. Like, bad. The news is bad after guys. us. <laughs> They're all I, I think it's two things for me. It's like, one, Strom should have done a hold to catch a predator on Hoffman. Like, just straight up. Yep. You know? And then two, um, Erickson says to, like, Strom something like, always call for backup, etc. But then he doesn't do it like himself. himself. He goes by himself. He goes, I want you to, he calls the lady at the FBI and says, can you put an AP, like a, a track on Strom's phone? And then when it comes up in a weird abandoned warehouse, he's like, I'll go there myself. Like, right. what the fuck are you, like, call the FBI, call SWAT, call everyone. There's a potential for one of your agents to have been kidnapped by one of the most prolific fucking serial torturers on the planet. <laughs> yeah. And you're just going to go there your own? Why? Because mm -hmm. I saw you in fucking uh, Rush Hour? Well, and also all of this, after you yourself had to just get out of a trap by cutting a hole in your throat. Yeah. Oh, man. Violently. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about Erickson. Oh, oh yeah, same, yeah, thing Erickson. Strong, same thing yeah. with Strong. Same thing with Same thing with him. Same thing. Yeah. This guy. Well, yeah. This applies to Strong, too. This is one of those moments where it's like, this is why I would crush it if, if I knew... Like, if I got out of a, a serial killer's trap, He'd I would fucking it. crush. They would never get me again, bro. They'd never get me again. Because I would, I would be like, time. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> They're never going to get me again. Alfredo. Can't die twice. <laughs> Can't die twice. Can't die twice. That's right? Funny. I'm traking myself on the daily just in case. Oh I wake up, I trake. Wake and trake. The wake and trake. <laughs> yes. Now, here we are in the hospital. Shut the fuck up. And I, <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say, my first thought was, Strom gets the call to go to the hospital. He walks into this place, and this, this fucking bed <laughs> with just blood everywhere. Like, I've been to hospitals many times in my life, all right? They don't let that happen. No. They just don't let, like, they clean that shit up real quick, well, or they, they don't let you in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you can't just walk yeah. into where somebody used to be and be like, oh, shit. Some of them still here. Like, that's just not how it works. <laughs> Some no. of them still no. here. Jesus. Um, all this goes down, and then we get to the fun and games that this Hoffman goes Sorry, through. hold on. I need yeah. to stop you Go for it. time here, because I, I have a note here that this was also we were introduced to something we just have to deal with the rest of this movie, mm -hmm. which is Strom talking through his throat. <laughs> yeah. Dude, he's so, it's, it's like it's great one method. of the worst ADR dubs ever. Ever. It's like they, they they were like we need to do something because he did we all just saw what he did to himself, but could they have done something else, Nick? No, I think we need to rank this. I think we need a new podcast within a podcast. <laughs> okay, right? Who did it best under their breath? Danny Glover in the first movie, or Strom <laughs> yeah. in this movie with all the exposition telling the audience what's going on? His sister. No shit, it's his fucking you. <laughs> Nine times we heard it's his sister. You don't have to say it again. Yeah. Who and then, did it best under their breath? Who did it best under their breath? <laughs> now I'm gonna I'm gonna say Danny Glover number one. Strom close second. BG. Just because Danny Glover is, is close. Very close. Okay. <laughs> <Huge difference. laughs> it's impossibly close. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh my god. Very close. <laughs> Danny Glover. My, he does. It's my least favorite, most favorite thing that Danny Glover. And because he does in every movie. You watch Predator, and he's just he just talks to himself the entire time. And he just tells you things that you're seeing on screen. Oh my god, that's a predator! I'm like, I, Isn't Danny, that no. also a Wahlberg thing, though? Yeah. Oh, definitely Wahlberg. So can we add him to the ranking? I don't think he did. I don't think oh, Donnie okay. did it in the other movie, though. I think he was asked specifically to not do. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it must be some kind of trap. Uh, I digress. We get to the what I think is the the fun, why this movie's fun and the fun part of this movie. We get to see the person like put like putting the people in the traps and like orchestrating all the stuff. And that's why this movie's fun. We go back, we see all of these fun moments with him and Jigsaw just hanging out, palling around. Palling around. And I love the models of all the, the traps scale model. Is so cool. It's cool. And it explains right? a lot of like the dumb bullshit yeah. we'd be questioning in the other movies. I'm like, how the fuck? It's like, this is how. This is it. Even earlier in this Legos. episode, I was talking about like, how the fuck <laughs> did they know that the, to have the string and the tape recorder? They had little models. They, they had the models. models. The maze. Um, I uh, he looks through, and of course we see our new victims. There's five of them uh, chained 
to lockers that have little like massive blades and there's keys in front of them. They're like, oh my God, this is going to be a whole new cool thing. We meet them. Of course, the whole theme here is that they were all uh, privileged, but they were all corrupt and they did something to, we don't know yet how they're all connected, uh, but the sooner they figure that out and the sooner they work together, the five, when five become one, uh, you guys will get out of this. Uh, and I like that they're all smart and they're like, we're in a jigsaw trap. So we need to stop. Like Charles is like, stop, don't move. And then Brit's like, I see that thing and I was like, oh my, you know, it's gonna, oh, that's a tripwire. That's the, he's bullshitting. This is gonna blow up. We need to, before we trigger this thing, we need to talk. And then Charles goes, Britt, what dead fucking marmot did you get that wig from? And why is it on your fucking head? Does it smell? Yeah. How is it connected? Is it a wig? I don't know. Wig in now with Scarpino. I fought the good fight, folks. I fought the good fight my whole life, and I think I'm gone down swinging because this wig might be the worst fucking thing I've ever seen in my entire life, and it, it killed me. I, I, 11.30 last it night, me. two bourbons in. <laughs> I'm hallucinating. I'm seeing the wig move like independent of the face, and I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Is like it an alien? special effect. <laughs> yeah, dude. dude. Like it was composited on her fucking head. Can, can you pull up a picture of this? What's the character name? Brit Saw Brit. 5. Also, okay. one it. Give a shout out to Julie Benz. I love, she was in this show called Roswell that I watched as a kid. The blonde. She was great. Yeah. Yeah. She said, I was like, oh, she's good. I, I recognize her. I was like, she can be in a lot of this. Nope. Dude, <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's uh, Brit. Oh, Brit's Julie Benz. Okay. Yeah. I think she's the other equally one. equally not though. as good in Roswell, but <laughs> yeah. I kind of like her. <laughs> no, oh, you got her. You, okay. I know who you're talking about now. If you can get her with the top, that's yeah. it. <laughs> there's there's one where she, no, there's, that's it's what it looks so like. That's unnecessarily right there. That's right there. shiny. It's like up. It's like an up, up thing. Oh man, it's bad. <laughs> I think it looks great. Dude. <laughs> so bad. Like why? Andy, don't. So she's not watching the show. Okay, the wig, the wig maker is not watching this. Okay, you're not gonna get a free wig. Are you, have you gone big wig, Andy? I fucking knew <laughs> no, you did. No, never, man. I knew. You did. <laughs> never, <laughs> man. Uh, it this, is a cool premise, though. I like it's a cool premise. Switching up the fact that like they are trying to put the pieces together, and like you were saying that they're smart and they're kind of like in the know about it all. Mm-hmm. I thought made it cool, and I I like the order in which these characters die because it felt unpredictable. Unpredictable. And mm-hmm. I feel like they did a good job. We're talking about some very surface level characters here, but mm-hmm. um, the 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 main guy that was like trying to boss everyone around and be like a big brute, but also be the smart guy, mm-hmm. like him dying as quick as he did, I was like, that's yeah. kind of cool. Didn't see it coming. Like because he was the one that and was like the way that he died. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. In the like the way that Megan Good takes mm. the situation to her own hands and um, beautiful hands in a very like. <laughs> spiteful kind of why like it's weird to hold a grudge in this situation because that guy like yeah that guy pushed her away and was like hey it's every every man for himself we all gotta fucking survive or whatever survival of the fittest and then she, and then she like she gets him killed because she was like well fuck you yeah it's survival of the fittest no. well, and immediately like right off the bat I'm, immediately off the bat i'm like Megan Good might be in on this. No, she's just kind of an asshole now. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little, a little sexy and Miss Independent out here. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need no man bossing me around, and I'm for it. You're I'll right, but also, him. like, the dude yeah. that she let live was, like, the weakest of them all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty weak. I like the, how Brett, like, calls that out, where Brett was just like, oh, we could have used him. He was, like, he was an asshole, but he was smart. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, British they're all... Accents, he was smart. Um, they're all trying to figure out how they know each other. Uh, so that's going to continue as they go. Uh, Brit, of course, uh, grabs all the keys, but instead of looking at them, they just kind of push on to the next room. Uh, Stram tries to call uh, Hoffman, but I'm sorry, Hoffman tries to call Stram, but gets Erickson instead. He writes his name down all scary like on one piece of paper. He's just, he goes, Erickson. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> okay, tough guy. Uh, Stram heads back to the FBI file room. This is where he digs up all the stuff on Hoffman, and he's like, oh, her sister. <laughs> I know this guy, my sister's ex-boyfriend. Okay. Not murderer? Not not the person that murdered my sister? Mm-hmm. That's how you're going to phrase gonna that? going to bury the lead a little bit what there. What the yeah. actual <laughs> fuck? So you're a multiple choice question time again, Tim. Oh. You're, oh, wow. you're a cop. I'm a cop. Mm-hmm. Everyone's a cop, right? We're, We're cool cops. cops, right? Just like the liquor Anyone store guys think cop. we are. And you come to the scene, and Andy's there. He's another cool cop. And Andy's just kind of looking a little, the same a little sus. Andy, that was the killer before, or different Andy. We don't know. Oh, okay. we don't know. Mm. No but but the question is this: This is the question I posed to the group of cool detectives. We're all detectives. 
This is Andy knows this victim. This victim ate all of Andy's chili, flaming hot snacks. Yeah. yeah, and none of us know this victim, but Andy's here, and Andy's got blood all over his fucking hands. <laughs> Do we a put him in jail or b put him in charge of the case? It has to be one of those two options. Like there really is no in between. It's tough. Why you not put him on? Let's give him the benefit of the yeah. doubt here. <laughs> yeah, this is where this movie's kind. Of, I mean, this is where a lot of these movies are dumb logistically, and you just shut your brain off, right? But this is where I was like, okay, if you fucking found this, yeah, you go straight to your boss. You know, and go, I think, dude, I, look at this. That's kind of like one of the things that makes this movie a lot weaker than the others to me is the moment you switch to the Hoffman as the Apprentice, where he is just killing. There is no way to get out of it. It kind of takes any of the cleverness out, even if it starts there, because. You are just killing people in very convoluted ways. Right. And I feel like when you then focus as well on the cop stuff, and it is the cat and mouse cop stuff, it, you need to have stronger writing because we're used to seeing those movies mm-hmm. and we know what a good one looks like. And so seeing this, it's kind of like everything they, every decision they make, we're questioning why. <laughs> but, but, but to the credit of these guys, to a degree, I'm some, some, of the, some of the stuff doesn't make it. I mean, it's dumb. But... I think they tie it all back, right? The the two Alfredo brought up the tunnels, right? For instance, and I, I had the same thought. I was like, dude, that, those are big enough for two people. Why wouldn't they look in there and see? And then she goes, oh, in our haste, we all turned on each other. Those tunnels were big enough for each other. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh shit, okay. So they're they're aware of this. And in this particular one, the whole point of this was to set. Hoffman up as the hero and frame Stram, and they actually, I think, do a pretty good job of yeah, it. Fair, which is cool. And all of this was like Jigsaw's final mission. So Hoffman is actually like put him to the test. She survived. They won the thing. I mean, she's probably dead now, but like <laughs> they won, right? So it wasn't just like Amanda who was killing everyone. Hoffman actually was like following the orders. And it's also his like recruitment and all that stuff, which you're going to get into right now. So Stram goes and is like, I want to go look at this razor wire cage. To which I'm like, why, why is that still there? Is that for the neighborhood kids to play Very with? good what question. What the fuck is going on? Like, yeah. <laughs> what the hell? Take this shit down. It's a fucking massive <laughs> thing of really dangerous. Anyway. <laughs> he goes around and we have a really cool I want to call out a couple moments here we've talked shit about the editing in this movie with all the crazy fast paced jump cuts and all the you know but they do do a couple things here where he's walking through the scene he walks out of frame and Jigsaw and, and Hoffman walk in which I think was done practically but it's a really cool way to tie yeah. the now with him going back and having been caught um, I, for, I think I skipped that scene but Hoffman of course gets caught by Jigsaw and is, and is basically like look you can either be a murderer or you can you can help me find redemption for these people, right? And that's th- those are your two choices. And his his first one was watching the razor wire thing. Uh, we get another moment where I'm skipping around here a little bit because um, uh, I got lost in my own sauce here. But we get another moment where we see them setting up the room from Saw Two with a gun, which I, which is weird and almost dumb, but like relaxing in a while because it's like they're playing a practical joke on people. And, and then someone starts to stir, and it's like, all right, they're ready. Let's get out of here. And it's like, oh. Oh shit! You guys were just there. That's yeah, fucking wild, it is right? really cool. It's kind of cool. <laughs> um, we get another. I'll skip around a little bit too. We get another moment where he was like, you know, Amanda's gonna fail her. She's gonna fail this test, and he's like, yeah, but you know, I don't think so. I have faith in her, or whatever. But like, you're gonna be the hero. You have to be the hero, or whatever. And I'm gonna give you the best thing ever, the best possible cover, which is anonymity. Everyone's gonna think you're a hero, but you could be. You can continue on to do this, which is basically the whole point of this freaking movie. Um, uh, let's see. I there was um. There's <laughs> this is reminding because this is he skipped uh I think yeah uh, go for it sorry I skipped passes. around a little bit there's a part where Strom is like looking through or the um the pendulum one yeah and Strom just kind of like turns and looks just past the camera and then just goes my God you you killed him and made it look like a jigsaw yep <laughs> like trap murder yep. and I was like. Yeah, come on, man. You didn't have to spell it out and like almost look at the camera well, while you did it. Alfredo, you did have to spell it out because mm. it was a leap in logic that was a little ridiculous. <laughs> oh, yeah. He has no proof that this guy was there at all. He just thinks that because he like he was tied to it. He's like, you did this. I know you did. Well, and then in the race, bar, I think he was like, you yeah. look. Yeah, but he like, saw I mean, the people and he's like, oh. Hoffman's Hoffman, Hoffman, Hoffman's a little peeper. Hoffman Hoffman was here. Here. This this his eyes. But see, we, here we get the jigsaw puzzle flesh pieces being taken out. So they didn't forget about it. Last week, I was like, oh, I guess they forgot about that because we don't see them. Okay. Mm-hmm. It was back. Cool. The apprentices do it, too. Um, let's see. We catch back up with the group of people who are now four uh, because uh, one of them had their head cut off already. Yeah. A deca- I think our first decapitation yeah. in Saw. It was kind of brutal to watch, even though it was cheap as shit. Again, you get me in that yeah. fucking room, Tim. Uh-huh. 
I'm I'm putting my back up against the wall and letting that little letting that razor wire cut itself. Like ra- those two razor blades cut the wire. Yeah. Because she that stands shit. there and then gets pulled back into it. I was like, wait, just wait up against put your head up against it. It looks awful. It's so Th- this bad. is one of the worst, cheapest effects like stop cut, but like it looked worse than shit in part one, two, and three. This is this is really bad. Oh yeah. And uh, I love, though, we get the line of the, the group in the second room. We're like, don't close the door. We're yeah. just going to start the clock. Don't close it's the like, fucking door. They're learning just like we are. <laughs> yeah. We've been yeah. saying that, Jeff. Again, here's what I want to do. Here's what I'll tell everyone. I'm like, we need to figure out what's causing the door to start the trap. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I guess this is what I, mean. I thought. I had that thought, and then I was like, no, because everything explodes, and then the door, like, in front of you locks anyway. So it's like. I don't know. It's a whole thing. I'm like, can you, can we trigger the trap outside in the other room, right? Keep the door like half open, put, mm-hmm. put our finger in a little thing or like find something else. That It yeah, blows up. You go to the next thing. There. It blows up. You go to the next thing. And I'm talking about that. And then there's a great moment. We'll, we'll just go through them a little bit right now. Right. Cause I've already screwed this whole thing up. I have no fucking idea where we are in this. Movie. <laughs> okay. The glass, the, the, we have the glass jars above and with the tunnels that clear, clearly done it. Right. The next room after Charles gets killed, we're down to three. It's Megan. Good. It's Brit. And it's Malik. Malik good redemption arc in this hated him at the beginning by the end i was like wow you really came a long way you did actually have growth in this and you yeah. learned and if you survive this thing you might actually be a better person uh we go into the bathtub sequence where brit eventually realizes all five of them would have taken a little shock i don't know about your fucking definition a little shock yeah, that is. was like kind of a leap and i get it like even the like working together they're not saying it's going to be pain free but like I, I just feel like that one and maybe there's something they could have said or done to make this clearer but like why would they think to do that? Like, it, if Kevin was in the room, Kevin would come up with that idea. If we were all in the room, we wouldn't. And also making uh, one of those things that hook, I'm like, oh, that still seems like pretty brutal. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but it's all of it conducts electricity, right? Like, the hook was just, they were all just means of, of hooking on. But if you grab a metal piece that's got electricity going through, it's gonna, this charge is going to go through you anyway. They could have beat that room, all three of them, if they tried. Because they have two hands. It could have been like, here's like, this, here's this, right? Here's this. I mean, one of them may yeah. have fried someone's heart, but whatever. I digress. <laughs> it's a casual game. Okay. That's fair. I mean, I guess it's fair. There's a lot of electricity. It. Anyway. That- I feel like if you got that far working as a group, you're already in the mindset of like, how do we work together to make this work? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Totally. That's fair. But I mean, the, the, yeah, I think you have to like progress from start to finish. And you're that way you're looking at every room. It's like, okay, this is a group project. How do we do this together? Yeah. Like, um, someone, we're all going to get hurt just a little bit. And then Jigsaw's like, if you don't, if you exit this room on time or not on time, bombs explode in the next room. Guess what? More bombs. More bombs. So I was trying to set up a gas <laughs> trap. It didn't work. So I'm just, just more bombs. Sorry, guys. I ordered. I ordered the, the gas. I ordered the gas trap on Amazon. It said it was gonna be here by the six. <laughs> yeah. Got delayed. Damn it, Prime. What do I pay for? I know. Uh, I, I want to give a shout out to one of the Bezos. worst, <laughs> one of the worst lines um, and deliveries of lines in the movie so far. Uh, we talked about it already, but it is the survival of the fittest line uh, before Megan Good kills the the asshole guy. The line itself is, get a clue, you fucking bitch. It's survival of the fittest. (laughs) Why are you so aggressive, sir? I understand this is a very stressful situation, but, like, you don't need to come at people that way. Like, that got him killed. Assert your dominance. Like, it was just so unnecessary. Like, he was kind of like, I'm angry and I'm I'm leading this situation up until that point. But I feel like that crossed a line even for him. I I also just super hated like the whole like well how do you how do you know she's a firefighter how do you know like i i just like just fucking talk dude like why like, i was so annoyed by him not talking and like well how do you know and he would just look at them and like change the subject and they would just go with it it was well, so freaking annoying well there's a little reasoning behind that it was because he was writing a story about all of them and it's kind of like the kid in the second movie was like, oh, I probably shouldn't tell them that my dad arrested all of them and framed them because they'll kill me. So I think he was like, I got to play this very tenuatively. I got to be no, careful I, with this. No, totally. I, I totally get that. But also, you, there's a good chance you're not getting out of this trap ever. Like, so it was just weird to like, here's the time where I'm going to be secretive. Mm. You're, you're, you're doing an investigative journalist piece, journalism piece. You're not the reason why their parents died or something. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's what was so annoying about this dude. But also he was just kind of a dick anyway. So 
Fair. Uh, we get to the bathtub tub sequence here where uh, uh, I think her, well, Megan Good's character is like, you're going to get in that tub, Malik. And then uh, Britt's like, yeah, I did. He just like stabs Megan Good. And you're like, what the fuck? And she's like, I didn't trust her. I'm like, well, now I don't trust you. Yeah, <laughs> you just how it works. What's yeah, we happening don't trust here? Because she killed someone. Um, now you did. And, and then they goods in the tub. I'm like, oh, she's still in on this somehow. Like that needle yeah. wasn't real. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't real. Uh, they fry her, of course, and she convulses as the door opens and they leave. It's an absolute wild thing to watch. Wild. Like, this was just <laughs> fucking goofy as all hell. Yeah, it wasn't even. Th- there was zero <laughs> sense of like. It, it kind of reminded me of the frozen freezer scene. Yeah. It's just like I'm watching it and I'm not feeling any sense of like pain or like, oh, like there's no squeamishness whatsoever. This would be on the bottom of the list of traps along with the water one or the, the freezing cold water one. Yeah. Uh, Jill comes to pay Erickson a visit. Um, and uh, we know he's important, by the way, because he's got one of those cool earpieces that I'll say it right now. I'm sad. Went out of fashion. Bluetooth. Why don't I bring it back? The Bluetooth. <laughs> you could so you cool. could be the champion of that, Nick. Maybe I will. Maybe I've got three coming for me and Andy and Alfredo. Get you a little jawbone. <laughs> little rocket. Badass. The job rocket. Uh Jill's like, look, I think yeah. I'm being followed, and I think it's Agent Stram, and I think he's the bad guy. And Erickson's like, I'm a terrible FBI agent. I'll just believe you. Well, God, we have to find him, right? Calls the cell phone. Cell phone goes to, he picks up for a second and then doesn't pick up at all. He's like, put it out an APB for Stram. He's clearly fucking the killer. And I'm like, what okay. <laughs> Um, no, hold on, hold on. We cannot just brush past this because I think we need. I would like to highlight um, who I think is the MVP of this whole franchise. One of the best actors that was just not given the role and just acted the absolute shit out of this role. And also, most likely, just somebody's like girlfriend or niece or something that yeah. they just wanted to give a job. This, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. this fucking lady. <laughs> I, I'm going to play the audio for you all. This lady is so hilariously awful, but just giving it her all. God bless her. Let's. I have two scenes we're going to play for you all right now. Let's check them out. Right away, sir. I'll be right back. <laughs> awful. <laughs> Scene number two. There you are, strong. <laughs> Dude, there you are. When, when I'm Special watch, Agent Cohen, bro. I'm watching this shit and I hear, there you are, strong. And I was like, what was that, lady? <laughs> that was there awful. you are, strong. Again, I don't, I, again, I'm not going to blame her for that. There's no way to say, there you are, strong in this context. You can't say no, that well. Uh, it makes her opinion, seem like she's in on it. Yeah. Dude, in my opinion, I feel like. She improv that, and the directors kept saying, "Like you don't have lines here. You don't have <laughs> yeah. Stop trying to get a credit. To zoom in on the thing, but she was like, there you are, strong. <laughs> it was Damn. so bad. But like her face isn't even on camera in it, so like they very easily could have not had her say that. So easily, it was so funny. Right. Uh, Hoffman heads back to the game and turns Strom's uh, phone back on so he can be tracked. Britt and Malik mate to the final nightmare. Uh, this is a big old. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be one. I love it. Uh, this is a big old chainsaw device that has a bunch of holes. Uh, and uh, the the setup is basically like this thing needs blood, ten pints of blood. And it could have been super easy. It could have been just a little pinprick if all five of them were there. But no, you guys had to be selfish. And uh, now it's just two of you. So both of this, Brit's like, shit, we could survive this if both of us do it. But it's going to take five pints. And then they finally tell yeah, each other. Yeah, they would have only, Nick, they would have only had to each cut off four fingers. <laughs> you know? Like, uh, why? Andy, Andy give bit. me the, the science theme song, please. Science, science, science with Kev. Kev, Kev. how much blood can you <laughs> lose before it's like terminal? Uh, because they only let you donate one pint at a time. I think you could probably two seems crazy. Yeah, but I think you can do three. You can. Well, they said five. Jigsaw said five. Yeah, they said five. So between uh, between five people, you're still giving two, which is a lot. Oh, right, fair. Two pints. Two pints. But then if you if two people have to give five pints each, that seems like all of your blood. (laughs) I mean, it's a lot of blood, and I for sure don't think that Brit and Malik made it out of this. I don't think I think they died. This yeah. is definitely a Larry Gordon moment where he just didn't, he didn't make it because yeah. that foot just bled out. Uh, 4.24 is the amount of 
blood you could lose before it starts getting close. Bad, yeah. Close to five. Oh. Jigsaw just rounds up. How they only let you donate one pint at a time? Well, because it's, it's really like, dangerous. Yeah, people. Well, get well, I'm not saying you, you, you can give four, to the edge. but I'm saying you Joey, can how many, two. You how many? Can how many two. pints are you willing to give me right now your, of your blood? Uh, well, probably a big fat zero. <laughs> okay, zero, zero. But I, it's just because I pass out every time I give. Who blood. would you rather have a pint what? of your blood? <laughs> I do. I tell them all, all the time, take the needle out and then I'll be fine. And then they never do. They always take like the little tubey thing or the bag thing out and they leave the needle in and then I pass out. Why would they leave the needle in? Like the little thing because they detach the thing. Oh, to attach the just, next bag? Does it yeah. just freak you out? I don't know. I, next just time a, I go to, go to Donate Blood, you want to come? No. Damn it. I really want to see you pass out. <laughs> Who would you rather <laughs> have weird. a pint, a freak, a, a pint of your so blood? I don't make this weird, guys. Would you rather me or Greg Muller have a pint of your blood? I, I'm honestly going to say you because I feel like Greg's going to do some like weird seance stuff with it. And I don't think that you, I think you would do some, I don't know what he would do with it. Honestly, if I had it, I'd throw it out. I would be like, this is disgusting. I can't. I'd give it to Kevin. You couldn't, I know that you would never be able to take it home because you know, be like, what the fuck Danielle would never, no, she would never allow that. Yeah. I'd give my blood to Kevin in case he wanted to like sous vide a little piece of meat or something. Mm. Oh. I would probably give it to Kevin too because I feel like Kevin. I, I don't want your guys' blood. I don't know what. <laughs> I don't know. You're I'm get it. really. <laughs> I'm bad at science. I almost failed chemistry, mm. but I feel like Kevin would be able to like maybe figure out how to like cryo freeze my blood yeah. and bring me back in, to another person. Well, for sure, I if I had any of Andy's DNA and the capabilities, but you would be able to figure it out, Kevin. <laughs> oh, that works. Thank you. If I had any of Andy's DNA and the capabilities, I would clone the shit out of him. There'd be five Thank Andys you. running around right now. <laughs> Be rad. Think, it would be yeah. really rad. Think about we Nick started an Andy having... boy band called the Andys, and the Man, and the so productive. It's the mountain range is their logo. I like that. And oh. we, and we throw mints at people. <laughs> Andy's in the mints. Yes, Andy's mints. Yeah, it all comes together. <laughs> God damn, dude! Give me power of attorney over all Give of you blood. right now. <laughs> Give <laughs> what do you want? I want power of attorney over you right now, Andy. I want to make all your choices for you. I'm gonna play. Uh, of course, uh, man. They this is where they have a heart to heart. Fuck, we're assholes. We're we are monsters. We deserve to be here. And Britt's like, shit, you're right. And so they like, she starts tying her arm up and she ties his arm up and they get prepped. And I was like, no way. I mean, I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, Britt's just gonna shove his ass in there. But to her they credit, just fucking commit. They just commit. And they just wow. hold hands like Thelma and Louise and they go off that cliff, man. And it is fucking gruesome. Yep. Gruesome. Uh, let's see. The other problem I have with this trap is that it seems like you would lose a lot of blood like peripherally on the device itself. It's that wouldn't make it into the beaker. Joe. Well, I mean, you figure it's like it's all it's all just going into like one thing, right? But yeah, but like it, even like it would still cover like the the windows and all that stuff. That's like oh, be not ever gonna drip down. That'd no, be a mess. Yeah, it's like you're losing a half a pint of blood, pint of blood probably just to the exterior, just aerating. Exactly. Yeah. You know? So then, if they need to give five pints and you only have like six pints of blood, it seems. Would you guys go with the hands or would you go with your legs? Uh, I don't oh. think you can fit your foot in there. No, you can't fit your foot. Neither. I would probably explode. I'm not doing this. I'm just fucking kill me. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, what are you doing? That is a very good point. You know, it's dumb. Uh, there is one moment where she where she's like, "Can we can we use the water from the other room?" And Malik's like, "No, that can't possibly work." I was like, "Why not? Why? Fill up your shoes and go dump it in the fucking machine. What's wrong with you?" Yeah. And is it just that the doors locked between that and the bathtub one? No, I think it was open. I think it wasn't. I think it doesn't yeah, lock the door until yet. you start the thing. Why wouldn't you grab yeah. Megan Good's body? So I thought about that, but I think really you questions. still need the currents to happen for the door to stay open. Uh, but then again, it's like that's just for the latches. So I guess I think it was could, just to unlock it, and then the door would be open, yeah, and it wouldn't matter if the locks re-engaged if it was open. Yeah, because right? I was like, shove pieces of Megan Good in there. Yeah. Like, let's yeah. just let's just chop her ass up. Throw a bunch of chunks in there. <laughs> chunks. Bunch Does, of chunks. If your body's electrocuted, you still have blood, though, yeah. right? It's just hotter. Yeah. The blood. It, was, it was really odd, though, Nick, that they the this writers thought to bring up the question of why not the water, but then didn't explain it. Yeah. <laughs> like and then like. And I thought, like, oh, good for them. They're kind of, like, you know, explaining, like, hey, the, here's why this thing can happen. Like, in movies when somebody is like, were you tailed? No, I checked. Okay, cool. And that's all you need is the viewer. Right. So all I needed as a viewer was just the most simplest of explanations. Like, oh, it tests, it knows the DNA, well, whatever. And they're like, no, no water. Well, Britt said something about, like, the pressure of, like, the, the viscosity of blood or whatever it is. Yeah. 
I'm like, yeah, I don't know, like that water is pretty muddy. Yeah, but like your we'll... hand had to be in it for some kind of like pressure. Oh, release. it did have oh, a little to, like engage the saw. Yeah, but still, just shove the fucking. You know what I mean? Get a, figure it out, guys. Yeah. You got a belt. Yeah. You know They're under I mean? pressure, Nick. You know uh, yeah, your brain's not functioning the same way. Yeah. This well, shit was gruesome, and like as dumb as some of the effects looked, I appreciated it. I feel like they really committed to like the arm getting cut and like it just being all dangly and weird like that's the type of disturbing imagery that i expect from a saw and like and they felt torture or it, like they felt it yes like they were this torture. this trap i think is probably the one that we're gonna rank as the oh yeah. the 100 percent. we can just Ooh, put that on just vomit right and pass out from the pain yeah you would pass out immediately yeah. right once that saw got about halfway through your hand you would pass out and your hand would fall yeah. out and everything would explode that's why i say just fucking explode anyway Kill me. Yeah. I'm done. Blow me up. Yeah. I like, think I'd rather whatever. be taken out by the nail bomb. Oh, whatever. nail bomb. You just put your face right up against it. <laughs> gone. Jeez. Yeah. Tough. Um, anyway, Hoffman or er, er, Stram chases Hoffman into his house alone without telling anyone where the fuck he is at all, which is ridiculous. Uh, and then gets Pigman, of course. Oh, no. Don't get Pigman. Sorry. He doesn't get Pigman. He follows him down and then he finds, what is it, Tim? A room with what in it? The glass coffin. Oh, shit. A glass coffin and there's in the a, first act. Oh, God. The thing's hanging there. But important note, and this is, again, how you're not getting me, right? I fucking see it, right? Mm -hmm. I've seen Superman 2. I understand, right? That the machine on the inside, that's where it was safe. The outside is what took everyone's powers away, right? And my first clue would have been, hey, the door didn't lock behind me. Oh, yeah good point i can still get it out of this fucking thing right? yeah strom deserves to die i'll say it right now wow there's a die. finally someone's you brave know, enough and to why say didn't it. hoffman just like why did he defend it like uh, i would just like pretend to like trip into the box you know <laughs> and, like he caught me you know but he like fought back and fizz there's a good chance like th th there are certain odds that say that like I, like what if he beat fucking Hoffman's ass or Strom's ass, and like he didn't get knocked into the box. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, I don't know. I think he. I think the the whole point is that he was like, "Look, I'm a again." He's like, "All you have to do to do this job great is just understand people like what they're gonna do, and like you just have to you just have to have faith that people's natural tendencies will kick over." Of course, he just knew that Strom was gonna fucking hide up in the ceiling or whatever Batman shit he did, and uh, sure enough, Hoffman's like, "Cool," gets his ass beat, gets put into the coffin, and then goes. And like lays back, and then the room, the tra the whole thing's triggered. He's like, "I got you, motherfucker!" And then he's like, "Uh, uh oh." Uh, the, of course, Erickson found Sram's fucking. Uh, the music's his... kicked in at this point, right? Yeah. Well, before that yeah. happens, Erickson finds a, a, his picture in a Manila envelope, and it's like, "Oh my God, Stram was the bad guy." The it's entire time. definitely Strom. Definitely like, him. I don't know, but okay. All right, whatever. I, I also uh, love that Hoffman was is so committed to the bit that he acted like he was scared when he first gets trapped. Yeah, <laughs> like he didn't have to go that hard on it. He like if the door closes, I would have been like, "Hey, gotcha!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, point he, point he, to he, the, he, the like, tape recorder for a second. You <laughs> yeah. know? Is there uh, a point to the coffin having like all those shards of glass in it? Well, just dramatics. I, I think to really make it yeah, clear, like that's the trap. Yeah. You know, to kind of well, trick them. The concept was that I think it's all this is in the verbiage. I didn't write a lot of this stuff down, but like there is a little bit more to this. He's like basically like the whole point of Strom is like he, it is a test for him. He was like, hey, if you're willing to like just get in the thing and let go of trying to chase this guy, like let go of your obsession, you're going to have to go through some pain. Cause you're gonna be out, you're gonna be basically sleeping on glass for a while. Good Lord knows how he's getting out of this coffin. Presumably, there's another way out. But basically, it's like if you could do this, great. Of course, Stram can't do it, so he fails the test. And then the test was also to set up Hoffman to take. So Strom takes the fall, and Hoffman then becomes the hero and can go on and uh, and keep Jigsaw's shit going, which I thought was actually kind of clever. Uh, we glossed over the fact that Britt actually makes it out uh, of the trap and goes, "We won." And then um, we don't see her arm mm -mm. ever. Right, so I'm thinking she's coming back for sure. Um, and then, of course, the glass coffin gets lowered into the floor as the walls start to close in and smash Strom to a pulp. Strom takes the rap for being Jigsaw's accomplice. Hoffman gets away. Scott Free gets to be the hero. So here's my question: That's the end, right? Strom walks in, plays the tape. It's doing the whole jigsaw thing. Right, Hoffman's talking this time, yada yada yada. 
Then you had the whole like fight. Hoffman gets put in, and then Hoffman's like pointing at the tape. Does he pick up the same tape and then just continues yes. to play the yes. second yeah. half? He, he picks up the same early. tape and keeps playing it. Yeah, he just stopped listening to it early. Right. <sighs> well, to be fair, there's a moment where he's playing the tape and he hears something outside. So I think that's him. Very talking. nicely talked. But holy shit. Hoffman's Hoffman, out like, there waiting, like listening yeah. to it. He hears the tape. He goes, and that's my cue. Yeah. Make some noise. <laughs> also, specifically. The back half was very much like, hey, like, yeah. you could be safe here. Just yeah. chill. Just get in the coffin. Everything's going to be fine. My uh, other issue. Yeah. What the fuck? All the people that were in the traps have nothing really to do with anything else? No, that was a whole separate thing. A whole separate thing. I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's like my biggest issue with the movie. Yeah, He's multitasking, just, Joe. But I just want to. That's strong. Yeah, but like. That is true. That was the whole point. Like, it, it did. Everything it else was... usually ties back to something yeah, else. Fair. It's just like, it's just this group of people, I guess. Just the people. I just didn't know if I was missing something. No, I think that that was the point. Yeah, just okay. to set up Strom and, and make him the, the bad guy. Um, well, in a lot of ways, I feel like this movie kind of has a different format than the others and they always do but this one ends in the least kind of like actually setting up the next thing this more just kind of like Wrapped it's like oh up. he's framed like what's gonna happen here whereas like the last couple have ended with uh oh fuck there's another game that we're immediately starting so yeah the, the, it ending not connecting i honestly don't remember if it connects or not and how that all goes but i i feel like they're at the point in the franchise that it's like we can tie things up later if we want or not yeah. <laughs> yeah by the end of this whole sequence when they're you know but right before that little interaction happens where they he knocks uh hoffman into the case um when it's the other deputy or captain what's his face the guy who looked like um um erickson like that. erickson erickson yeah erickson I know As who you're talking about, who he looks other, like. I swear to God, I thought we were going to cut it. I was going to see uh, Donnie Wahlberg also still limping. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought I thought we were going to cut it and see Donnie Wahlberg limping with Don't it. You're not Jigsaw! Bitch. <laughs> with no head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holding oh, his <man>. head. <laughs> Uh, so now it is time to rank the traps of the Saw franchise. We choose the one trap that we think best represents the movie, and then we rank it against the others. Currently, number one, we have the rack from saw three we have the needle pit from saw two <clears throat> the reverse bear trap from saw one and the scalping chair from saw four i think it's the blood yeah. the teamwork of blood mm, yeah that's yeah. the situation yeah where do we put it where, where do we want to put that i think it's last i kind of feel like it's better than the scalping chair like it I like that there was uh, ways to do it. If they had more of them, it would have like been better. But the, with two people, they could still do it. It had that gore factor that I feel like worked for it. I don't know, but clearly most of the budget went towards it because that beheading sequence did not have much. Of budget. <laughs> yeah, I would say. But yeah, I wouldn't be mad if it's last. Uh, you know, I don't know. It was. It was. It's. Yeah. What was number four? The scalping, the scalping chair. chair. I. Uh... I think I've, they're maybe tied. That's close. I would I would yeah. go either above or below the scalping chair. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> I mean, we can we can tie him. I'd go above. I'd go above. And he's going above. Let's okay. put it above. Let's put it above. Okay, yeah, it's it going above. Because I, I, do I don't like, like the teamwork factor, and I like that by the end of it, it's like, man, we could have the twist of yeah. we'd be sacrificing a lot less had we just initially worked together. I think it's kind of neat. Very cool. But what is that? Do above. we ever? I don't know that that ever factors into the the, uh, the reasoning for the other ones, but I don't really care. Yeah, I mean, that. even the scalping chair, though, I feel like that the Ugh. the um, cleverness of it all like wasn't there character wise. It was yeah. just a fucking gruesome thing to look at. What what do we call this one? Blood pints? Sure. <laughs> all right, blood pints. It is. Uh, yeah. Now it's time to rank the reveals. Although, here, uh, let me tell you one more reason why I think you should be good with your choice. Right? Is this? And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I'm right. This might be the only game. It actually features a circular saw. <laughs> I was going to say saw, and then I was like, wait, no, the first one actually has a saw. The first one had, it, the, had yeah, the saw. Yeah, I'm wrong. This is a hack gets, saw, though, right? He gets hack killed saw. by a circular saw. But that's not a part of the game, right? It's not part of the game, though. Yeah, yeah. This is the logo. It's the titular mm. thing, man. It is. It is. Yeah. If it's Halloween, right. it must be saw. Uh, now it's time to rank Halloween. the reveals. Currently, number one is Saw 2. 
with the tape on playback, Amanda's jigsaw kid in safe. Uh, so good. Second place. Oh yeah. We have saw one. He's on the floor. <laughs> saw three comes in at number three. It's Amanda's game. Jeff is the husband and has another game to play. Mm -hmm. And coming in at last place currently never is fucking see. Saw Maybe. four. Yeah. Uh, this happened at the same time as three and Hoffman is the second apprentice. Where do we want to rank the twist that Hoffman is still the second apprentice. It's <laughs> still the second apprentice and think, frames strong. Um, I think it's, kind, I mean, I did kind of enjoy watching Hoffman on the scene during part two. Like watching the sequences where he's in oh, that house yeah. with Jigsaw setting up the trap from part two with all the people on the ground as they're like asleep or whatever. I thought that was kind of neat, but other than that, kind of kind of lame overall last yeah, for me I, i'd go last yeah i'll put it last mm -hmm. not much of a twist but i li I did like that everything kind of tied together nicely and that I, I i like a clever way for the bad guy to get away with it and i felt that this movie was it pulled that off more than it didn't yeah you know um yeah i'm not gonna fight you guys on it i just really really hated the hoffman reveal that it just, it just felt like they were trying to do one again. Yeah. It was like, he's in the room, and it just really so flat for me. But, yeah, I could see this being last. Um, all right. I do want to say that um, the five-star man in the chat came up with an amazing name that I am going to use for the trap. It will now be called Blood, Pi Blood Pints, a.k.a. the Bloody Buddy System. Yep. <laughs> it's great. That sounds great. The Bloody Buddy System. <clears throat> Cool. So that's there we go. It is number five. And now it's time to rank the Saw movies. Currently number one is Saw 2. Two is Saw 2. Sorry. One is Saw 2. Two is Saw 1. Three is Saw 3. And four is Saw 4. I'll start. That's I'll confusing. put this right above Saw 4. Wow. I like this movie because it's uh, it's what I think a Saw movie should be, which is simple, straightforward, a couple twists and turns here, some giant leaps in logic, a lot of gore, and a nice little uh, ending that's wrapped up nicely in a bow with the bad guy winning. And that's exactly what this was. I found it to be fun. It's an hour and 34 minutes. And I wasn't super confused the entire time. That does help. Which is nice. Joey? I'm putting this last. Damn you, Joey. I know. Point, <laughs> no. counterpoint, always with me. Here's the thing. From the, the best, beginning the of the of episode, we could have guessed where Nick and I were ranking this. this that was never going to be a surprise. I don't think the traps are particularly good. I don't think the reveals are particularly good. I don't think the performances are that great. It's not i out of all of the other ones i would rewatch one through four i don't think i would ever rewatch five fredo what about you i'm ranking this one last i think four was messy but i think this one was very dull and as messy as four was i still like the whole like rigs being taken through you know what i mean to become yeah. potentially jigsaw and this one was just like the framing of agent strom yeah, yeah, this was last for me. Yeah. Tough. I, I also put this one last. For, or Andy, what about you? All right. No, I was going to say, yeah. I, did, I think uh, for as convoluted and messy and annoying to keep up with four was, it still had higher highs and more thrills, I think. And um, I still enjoyed kind of figuring out, oh, man, Hoffman was, you know, that guy was OK the whole time. Oh, man, this is kind of crazy. And I enjoyed the drama of bringing back Jeff from part three. Um, I do think that this one is a bit tighter of a product, but still just doesn't have as many of the thrills and surprises. Yeah, this movie, I actually hated this movie when wow. it first came out. Like, I remember, like, just being like, oh, man, they fucked up, Saw. Like, this, they've totally missed the point. That wasn't even a twist. Like, what the fuck is this? Watch it now, my, honestly, not that bad. I, I'm happy that we're still where we're at with this franchise. And I was, I'm, once again, can't wait for next week. Can't wait to see what's going down. Uh, but let us know what you think of Saw 5 in the comments below. Alfredo, where can people find you? They could find us at youtube.com slash at dog bark show. Uh, that'll be right now. We have the trailer up, but next week we will be uh, putting out content. So um, we're testing the waters with a lot of stuff, uh, sketch comedies and whatnot. So um, yeah, hope you uh, come check us out. Go check it out, everybody. And until right next week. <laughs> <laughs> there you are strong.